Hey smart people, Joe here, uh, yes. The answer to the question in the title of this video is yes. There is life on Earth. We know that because, well, we live here. But what would we think if we were looking at Earth from six million kilometers away? That's the distance from which Voyager 1 captured this image on February 14th, 1990. All the complexity of our living planet summed up in a single pixel of bluish light. Now, if one day some extraterrestrials download that image off of Voyager, how would they be able to tell there's life on Earth based on that? This is the question that we face as we get ready to aim the most powerful telescopes ever built at distant worlds outside our solar system. If we're gonna search for signs of life, what exactly are we searching for? Since the discovery of the first exoplanet, a planet orbiting a star outside our own solar system, back in 1992, we've confirmed the existence of almost 4,000 distant worlds. Scientists think every star in the sky may host at least one planet of its own. More than 2,000 exoplanets were discovered by the Kepler Space Telescope. Moment of silence. Never gonna forget you. Looking at artistic renditions of these alien worlds, if you didn't know better, you might think we can just point a big telescope at an exoplanet and snap an image of it. But Kepler's raw data looks less like this and more like this. Kepler would stare at one spot in the sky looking for stars that dimmed as an exoplanet crossed in front of them, blocking some of their light. And by putting together a bunch of data, like the size of the star, how much light is blocked, how often the planet passes in front, then we can estimate the size and the mass of the exoplanet. And if you know how big something is and you know its mass, you know its density. Like if it's a gassy planet or a rocky one. And because we've studied how orbits work in our own solar system, that same data can tell us how far an exoplanet orbits from its star. Now finally, if we measure how hot a star is, maybe by looking at the color of its light, we can tell if a planet has the right conditions where liquid water, or as I call it, life juice, could exist on its surface. Based on all of this, we've learned that some exoplanets are tiny ice Earths. Some are these big warm Neptunes, even hot Jupiters. And only some are potentially habitable. But there's a big difference between could have life and does have life. To tell the difference, we need to see something that could only be made by life. I'm not talking intelligent life or even complex life. The tiniest puddle of replicating pond scum on an exoplanet would still be the biggest discovery we've ever made ever about anything. We need to find biosignatures. So a biosignature is like a chemical fossil. It's something that we can see that must be produced by life. And, and this is important, it can't be made by some natural process. So what the heck counts as a biosignature? Voyager 1's pale blue dot is the Earth selfie that Carl Sagan is famous for. But he had a different one taken a few years later that not many people know about. In 1993, as the Galileo spacecraft passed by Earth on its way to Jupiter, it turned its sensors towards our home planet to ask if we had no previous knowledge of whether Earth was home to life, would we actually be able to detect any of our own biosignatures? So life on Earth has been around for at least three and a half billion years. And biology has changed the atmosphere in some pretty big ways during that time. Take these chemicals. Here's what their levels would be on a dead Earth versus what they actually are. Now, Sagan was looking for a kind of chemical disequilibrium. Basically, you look for chemicals that shouldn't be there. And if you find them, there must be something on the planet consistently making them. And when he looked at Earth, he found water, which actually wasn't very hard. H2O turns out to be one of the most abundant molecules in the universe. The liquid water is a necessary ingredient for life, but it's not a sign of life. Now, Galileo also found methane. Now, methane breaks down really fast in a planet's atmosphere, so if you find it, that means something is making it. Now, here on Earth, it's made by microbes and burping cows, and we have a lot of both. 
but there are natural processes that can make methane too, so it doesn't necessarily mean life. I mean, we've also detected methane on Mars, and Saturn's moon Titan has lakes of the stuff, and no sign of life on either of those. Well, how about carbon dioxide? I mean, I'm alive and I make it, but so do volcanoes. Not a perfect biosignature. Okay, well, what about oxygen? O2 was incredibly toxic to Earth's earliest life forms, and for the first billion years of life, there wasn't much of it around, until photosynthesis showed up and started just throwing it away. Now today, this previously poisonous photosynthetic trash gives us life, but not so fast. You guessed it, there are natural processes that can make O2 too. Like on super hot planets, ultraviolet light can break down water and kick out the hydrogen and leave oxygen behind. But the levels of oxygen and methane that the Galileo satellite measured on Earth were way higher than those natural processes would predict. This was the chemical disequilibrium that Sagan was looking for. But it still wasn't a smoking gun, just suggested life as a possibility, a maybe. Now, Sagan did find one other biosignature on Earth that was especially weird. On lighter areas of the planet's surface, dry land, there are these massive areas that absorbed red light. And just beyond that, into the infrared part of the spectrum, a whole bunch of light that wasn't absorbed. Now, since there's no rock or mineral that we know of that absorbs red light quite like this, the best explanation was a pigment covering the planet's surface, one that absorbs red light and hates near-infrared light. That pigment, well, we know it as chlorophyll. It absorbs red and blue light, but not other colors. And that's why so much of Earth is green. This biosignature is known as the vegetation red edge. Since Sagan's little Galileo experiment, scientists have added to the list of possible biosignatures, and they've learned a lot about how we might tell them apart from natural processes. Now, in general, we know that chemicals absorb different colors of light. So if we can somehow measure how an exoplanet's atmosphere filters light from its star, we can get a fingerprint of all the chemicals in that atmosphere. Well, now that we know what to look for, how do we detect these signatures from light years away? Now, the best study of Earth-like planets will come from looking at light from the host star reflected off the planet and filtered by the atmosphere. It's basically the same way we take pictures of Earth today, only much, much, much farther away. Thing is, Earth-sized planets are about 10 billion times dimmer than their stars. And exoplanets are separated from their star by extremely small angles. Directly imaging an exoplanet is like trying to see a moth buzzing around a searchlight on top of the Eiffel Tower from New York City. And to do this, astronomers have designed star shades, which can be placed tens of thousands of kilometers in front of orbiting space telescopes to precisely block out the star's light and make the exoplanets visible. It's like the way that blocking out a car's headlights with our hand helps us see at night. Of course, we only know the signs of life as it exists here, the only place that we've found it. Somewhere else, life may use completely different chemistry, giving off completely different biosignatures. And even here on Earth, life hasn't always looked the same. Back in the ancient Archaean era, early life forms lived under a cloudy methane haze. And the first photosynthesizers may have been purple microbes, not green. You know, this would all be so much easier if we could just sense some convenient radio signal coming from an exoplanet sent by an intelligent technological life form. But when you consider that human technological civilization only covers 0.000002% of our planet's entire history, our chances of listening in the right place at the right time, they're not great. We're looking at the very edge of what is technologically possible, so it's best not to hold your breath on finding alien life just yet. Stay here. Notice anything different? Oh yeah, I got a haircut.